Technical Touching 24 Blogspot.com Google's branding is constantly under a series of changes, but it's the hardware division that seems to be having a bit of an identity crisis. Last year we got the Google Pixel, Google's first in-house designed phone, but it didn't exactly look like it was designed from the ground up. This year we're getting an amalgam of designs from the company, and both have some significantly different design language. Hey everybody, it's Nick from Android Headlines, and this is our review of the Google Pixel 2. Much like last year, we're getting two phones with the same specs, same features, same performance, and same camera. However, unlike last year, only the backs of the phones look anything alike. What do these two share in common that makes them so good? Front-facing speakers grace both phones, as well as some truly killer wireless audio support. Google's AI-powered features have been taken to the next level in some amazing new features, and the cameras are truly a generational leap above the competition in many ways. Let's check out the differences between these two phones. Size-wise, it's about the same difference as last year. Both phones are only a tad taller than last year's models, and the smaller Pixel 2 looks extraordinarily similar to the original, featuring the same screen size and the same large bezels. The display is totally flat, and even the chamfered edges make it feel like an older phone design. The Pixel 2 XL, on the other hand, features a completely different design language, and it makes sense why, too. While the smaller Pixel 2 is still manufactured by HTC, the larger XL is actually made by LG, and it shares more than a few things in common with the V32. The glass is curved all around, and in all honesty, the way it's done here looks like a very large, elongated Apple Watch. The display underneath is not curved though, just like the V30, and in fact uses the same 6-inch panels as the V32. With this comes some scrutiny on the displays. Both are OLED displays with HDR functionality, but the smaller Pixel 2 features a squared off 16x9 Samsung AMOLED display, which features a warm hue to it and some absolutely amazing viewing angles with no color shifting or anything like that. The Pixel 2 XL, on the other hand, uses the same 18x9 P OLED from the V30 and carries the same look and feel of that display. Right off the bat, you'll notice something different when comparing the two. LG's panel has a more organic look, if you will, whereas Samsung's is a normal digital-looking grid. I'm going to be a bit weird here and say that I actually prefer the look of LG's panel, as it has a bit more character to it. That could also just be coming from a recovering plasma TV fan, but I really think this is just going to be down to more of a preference thing than a correct thing. It's also got a cooler panel, and while I don't really like the sRGB look that comes out of the box, as it appears a bit washed out to my eyes, enabling vibrant colors helps this a lot. Color purists, though, will want to keep that default look out of the box. The big problem I've got with it is the same issue most displays have. The polarizer, or the coating, whichever is the main fender here, causes the display to turn blue at any angle. Either way, I think the issues many people have with this display are completely overblown, and while at the end of the day it isn't as good looking as the displays on Samsung's phones or even the smaller looking Pixel 2 for instance, it's still a great display. Front facing speakers are incredibly important in a day and age where we use our phones for entertainment more than ever. Google has put front facing speakers on both phones, even the smaller bezel Pixel 2 XL, if you can believe it, and both sound fantastic. Ironically enough, the larger bezels of the smaller Pixel 2 don't mean better speakers. In fact, the ones on the XL sound better better as a whole and can get a tad louder too, with some more distinctive bass and a wider range of sound. Both phones also feature an excellent grippy coating to the metal on the back, meaning they don't feel as slippery the way most metal or glass phones feel. This coating also helps keep the metal body in good shape if it were to get wet, since both devices are now finally IP67 water and dust resistant. A huge downside to both, however, is that neither features a 3.5mm audio jack, instead coming with a dongle in the box to plug into the USB Type-C port on the bottom. This will provide users with 24-bit high-res audio support, and in general, the audio here sounds amazing. It's extremely well-balanced, clean and clear, unlike many other phones which are overly bass-heavy out of the box. Wireless audio fans will be extremely happy here too, as Google has support for every single type of wireless codec out there. You got crappy old SBC for legacy Bluetooth devices, and the considerably better AppDex, AppDex HD, and Sony's own LDAC are all licensed for use with peripherals that support them, and Google even features a new hassle-free quick pairing functionality for products with the Made for Google logo. Rounding out the software side of the house is of course Android 8.0 Oreo, 
with a surprise upgrade to 8.1 Oreo in the coming weeks. 8.1 Oreo will unlock something we previously didn't know Google was even working on, its own in-house designed system on a chip. This SoC is used specifically for image processing, and while it's not used for the camera yet, it will soon be enabled and will unlock the true potential of the Pixel 2's camera, which is a bit of a shocker when you see the quality of the photos and video that come from this phone. Looking for the best overall smartphone camera you've ever used? Yep, this is it. And while Google camera software is a bit simplistic, it's the back-end AI-driven stuff that really works magic here. But of course, check out our full camera review to get all those details. That AI power theme is carried across the whole phone, and it's powering new features like Google Lens, which helps you to visually identify things around you and search them instead of typing it in a box, as well as extracting text like names, dates, and addresses. It's in a preview state right now, so it's a bit limited, but it's nice to see Google finally resurrect the old Google Goggles app and give it a fresh coat of paint. There's also a ton of new augmented reality content that Google is supposedly launching soon, but none of that is available quite yet. The new Active Edge feature is just like what we saw on HTC's U11 earlier this year and allows you to squeeze the device to launch Google Assistant. This can be done whether the phone is locked or unlocked, and a quick squeeze is also greeted by some truly excellent vibration motors inside. While these aren't quite as nuanced as the ones on the V30, they feel much more precise and higher quality than the usual run-of-the-mill smartphone vibration motors. The downside here is that squeezing it only launches Google Assistant, nothing else can be configured, and that's another downside of Google's Pixel software designs as a whole. What you see is what you get in most cases, and while Google certainly seems to be pretty great at picking things most of the time, I'm in the Android space because I like choice. It's pretty clear that Google is finally coming into its own though, and while the design language needs some clearing up, the overall experience here is unparalleled. Insanely good battery life, performance like no other phone, and features that don't require you to think or scrounge around on the phone for them are just part of what makes the Pixel 2 family so good. Unless you're looking for a better manual camera experience or really need the S Pen, there's really no better place to drop a couple hundred bucks this year on a smartphone than Google's Pixel 2 family. And you can take that advice to the bank. We hope you enjoyed that review and will subscribe to us for regularly updated content. Chat with us in your favorite social media outlet and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 tech news coverage. Thanks for watching and until next time.